When I upgraded my smartphone to one that doesn't have an easy to replace uh, lithium polymer battery, I became acutely aware that uh, charging it up to 100% every night might not be the best thing for battery health. It may actually be prematurely shortening my, the usable life of the entire phone as a result. This, this was my first uh, smartphone and it does have a replaceable battery. I ruined the one that came with it uh, within the first two years of always charging it up overnight to 100%, using it up throughout the day until it was complete, nearly completely depleted as well. A full charge cycle in other words. Um, but since the battery was easy to replace, I bought a new one and got a couple more years of life out of this. Uh, I may not have that option for this phone. One thing I tried to do was plug in my charger into a timer every night that would shut off after an hour or so in the hope that I can stop the charging process just short of say 80%. Um, the range I see on the internet on, pla on places like uh, batteryuniversity.com they, they have experiments where the uh, longevity of battery life can be prolonged if, if you target a range of 25 to 75% of discharge to charge cycle. Um, whereas 50% to 100% tends to be worse for the battery overall. Um, ideally, you, you can lengthen how many cycles you could get out of the battery, but it's a trade-off. Uh, 75 to 65%, for instance, you don't get much usage out of the battery on each cycle, but you get in to fit in many, many more cycles over its life lifespan. Of course, the trouble with using the timer approach is how many uh, hours do you set the timer for? And it differs from device to device, how much charge is left on the battery. And so it's difficult to get right, and especially the, these timers aren't all that accurate anyway. I mean, I think this has a resolution of uh, 15 minutes. Each of these units is about 15 minutes. What I really needed wasn't a timer that would shut off the charging process after a fixed amount of time. Uh, what I needed was a different sort of countdown timer. One that would count how many milliamp hours were being transferred from whatever charging device your phone was plugged into, uh, being transferred into the phone and after a certain preset amount of milliamp hours it would shut off the power to the phone. Now, I think while this is charging this display module is actually independent of the charging process and can be removed without interfering the counting and there you should be able to see the MAX471 current monitoring module. This is a TM1637 module modified with a whole bunch of barge wires in order to add three buttons as well as two indicator LEDs one of which is a uh, a bicolor, I think it does it does red and green and also a blue one. So here's the charge controlling system with the display module removed and this is the AT Tiny 85. This is a logic level N channel MOSFET and which uh, switches the power on and off to the phone. And this is the MAX471 uh, current mo uh, sensing module. It's, it's completely analog, which means that the current is communicated to the microcontroller as an analog voltage. Uh, so the microcontroller has to interpret it by using the al its analog to digital converter on, on the uh, one of the uh, general purpose input outputs that support it. And of course the current reading will depend on what voltage reference it uses. Now if, if we use the 
supply voltage, well, that can vary depending on what this is plugged into. If it's plugged into one of these, I, I found that um, it would pull the voltage down to something like 4.8 uh, volts. Whereas if it's plugged into or charged into the mains, um, this one in particular, it can reach as high as uh, 5.2 volts. And that means that we have a, a wide range of uh, currents to choose from. So how can we figure out how many milliamp hours are actually flowing along the cable? To correct for that, this is a TL431 uh, precision voltage shunt that uh, provides to another analog to digital converter pin uh, a 2.5 volt reference and it uses between the two analog readings it can figure out what the voltage actually is being read from the um, current sensor. Now I've stuck uh, some decoupling capacitors in various places. Um, first put this in uh, 0.1 microfarad cap across the uh, power rail going to the 80 tiny 85 but that turned out not to be sufficient to, to protect against brownouts when it switches the power on. Um, the phone just draws in so much current that um, crashes the chip or brownouts the chip and I'm unable to set anything. Uh, I found that adding this, I think this is um, 220 uh, microfarad cap, and that has solved that problem. Uh, that, this can now plug into here, and let's see if the charging process it can continue on as before. Okay, so it's now counting down the last few milliamp hours going into the phone, and we're at 72%. And when this counts down to zero, now the LED indicator switches to color uh, to indicate that the charging process is over and it's cut the power to the phone. Now some of my USB chargers only provide um, a micro USB output and they don't have any um, female USB port like this charger has. So that means I provide a choice of options for getting USB power into this, um, which can be selected via this switch. So you can you can either get uh, USB power via um, this micro USB breakout here, or alternatively via the USB plug uh, male port that came from the uh, charge cable that I cut in order to insert the uh, MAX471 module. The other end of that charge cable is going into the phone. Likewise on the other end um, to charge the phone uh, there's this micro USB with an adapter because this phone is USB-C uh, but you can also plug a charge cable into here uh, hence if you have a USB-C charging cable that can fit into here that can be used as well. Now you'll notice that uh, the data lines are not hooked up and this port here, the, this Incidentally, I grabbed this off of a broken uh, power bank, like one of these here. So the data lines do exist on this, but they're not hooked up either. So that means you can't really negotiate um, quick charge features or in the case of USB-C higher voltages. Now you wouldn't want to have higher voltages coming through here, higher than 5 volts, because um, that's what's powering the uh, 
80 tiny 85 is the USB current directly. There's no regulator. This will only support um, a slow charge overnight, which is fine with me because uh, from what I've read, um, fast charging also tends to shorten battery longevity. So another issue here is that the AT Tiny 85 is um, not using a clock crystal. So even though I try to get the current sense reading as accurate as I can uh, with this uh, precision voltage reference, um, that's no good if the time is also uh, way off. And without the clock crystal, I'm relying on the RC oscillator that's internal to the microcontroller, and that, that can be like off by as high as 10%. But uh, what tends to happen is that the error tends to be consistent and also stable over a moderate temp temperature range. So provided I calibrate it uh, when I'm writing the firmware for this, um, it should be reasonable to use. So in other words, the firmware itself has the correction for the RC oscillator for this particular microcontroller. So to calibrate the milliamp hour count, I'm using one of these USB charger doctors. This is a USB charge monitor uh, that just I bought on Amazon, and it uh, displays the not just the voltage and the current, but it also counts the amount of milliamp hours that are flowing through from USB input to USB output. And I can reset the count by holding this down and then it just starts counting up how many milliamp hours there are. I think I got it to about within 3%. Uh, then again I ha have to try this a few times at different temperatures to see just how much does that uh, RC oscillator clock in here drift at different temperatures. But um, reportedly it should be reasonably stable. So the way this works is the first button sets the milliamp hours to count down the, pre the preset and it will count that down to zero and then shut off the power. The second button is an estimate of how much current in milliamps is flowing through the USB cable. The third button doesn't have a function yet. So I was thinking, hmm, I could possibly program in uh, additional modes. Like for instance, this can be used not just for managing the charge of a phone overnight, but also if this is, this is being used to power an Internet of Things device, like say an ESP. 8266 microcontroller or an Arduino or something like that, um, it can turn it on and turn it off at regular intervals, say. Some devices may crash and having it regularly powered up and powered down uh, once per day, say, um, might be one way to ensure that uh, a device gets a regular reboot. But there are possibly other functions I've yet to think about that I can um, have a device such as this perform.